Hello, Facebook. Hey How are you? We're just logging in to Let's Talk About Ice. Just waiting for some people to tap in, so let me just check. Oh, yeah, we're on. Say hello if you're there. Can you check? Yep, something's going on there. Awesome. Santana. Hello, awesome. Santana. Hey, Santana. First episode, guys, groundbreaking moment. This is going to be awesome, an ongoing series where we're talking about methamphetamine. It's a real problem. Join in, invite everyone to join in. That's something. <laughs> Jay's hey, going up and it's too far away, you have to go meet it. <laughs> okay, fantastic. We're just waiting for some more people to get online. It's been a hectic day today, but we've done lots of awesome work. We've trained some uh, two brand new presenters um, that have some amazing stories. And so we'll just wait a little bit till we get some traction out there. And um, 6.30 every Thursday, we're going to be here to share um, not only myself, Jay. Jay will be hosting the show, and in a moment, I'll ask Jay to share a little bit of his story and his background. He's one of our frontline presenters. Um, he does an awesome job um, expressing the entrapment and the, the dangers associated with ice and the how that it takes you to. Um, and he's really excited about being on the show today. Yeah, absolutely. This is massive for me. I've got such a passion, like everyone at AAIC. Uh, to raise awareness and educate the community about this drug. Like I said before, it is a real issue. So, guys, my story, um, do we like to go? Do you want to wait a little bit longer? Or? I'll wait a little bit longer. Um, we're just waiting for some hellos. For, hello from everybody out there. Hello. If you're there, just show us some love. <laughs> we had, uh, in the first day, um, the, the, the post for Let's Talk About Ice reached uh, two point. 4K, so we're expecting you know a few people to tap in today. Just let me know if you can hear okay. So if the sounds okay and um, Santana, can you hear us? Thank you for all the shares too, guys. Yeah, that's, it's awesome. Thank you for sharing because we might be able to help somebody that's struggling with addiction um, and taps in online, or a family that uh, needs some some support, um, and we have family support numbers that we're going to share with you um, towards the end of the show. That's awesome. All good. We can sit a bit forward, Jay, so we can good. read all the comments. I think this camera's Thanks, a little Santana. bit too far away. That's what I think. Let's bring it up closer so we can see. Because this is our first show with you guys. So Sounds then. perfect. Nice. Yep. Excellent. Guys, a big part of the show as well is Q&A. So... At the end of uh, each show, the last five, ten minutes, we're going to do question and answers. Mm -hmm. uh, so feel free to save up your questions and uh, post them uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the show. And we can answer them directly. Um, if we can't answer them on the spot, we will answer them during the week, post yep. them on Facebook, guys. We'll endeavour to get to everyone. So Absolutely. And that's, you know, a big thing about it is reaching out yep. uh, for people. If you, if you are going through addiction, feel free to ask questions, you know. No question is too dumb or anything like that or naive. Ask. If you're unsure, ask. Um, everyone here has been through a lot, so we've, we've got some answers for you. Hopefully we can help and um, yeah, we we'll create pathways um, for people to get help. Uh, we're not detox, we're not rehab. Um, we are about prevention and education um, and just unveiling the enemy out there that is killing, stealing and destroying lives. And, um, you know, on that path, we obviously reach out a hand um, to somebody that may be entrapped like we were, and somebody offered help to us, and we just want to be there and, um, yeah, just be there to help them step into that journey of recovery because life is good and um, it's awesome to be clean, you know. We're high on the most high, and, <laughs> yeah, and that's life, and it's awesome, and, yeah, we're just um, here for, for people that you know, want to understand addiction, um, specifically ice addiction, guys. Um, but we're happy to discuss any addiction and create pathways for help. It's funny you said about the natural high, yeah. the being sober and straight. Um, yesterday when we were doing some media stuff, Andrea and I were doing some media stuff, I got home and I was, I saw my housemate, she's like, you're glowing, man. And I'm like, I'm just buzzing and I was thinking to myself, this natural high that I'm on, just from being sober and straight and clean, coming up three years clean, 
and on top of that, doing what I love and giving back to the community after taking so much is just such, it's the best feeling ever, you know? And I genuinely feel blessed yeah. to be alive. 2% yeah. of, of addicts, um, right. only 2% of ice addicts ever make it out of addiction. So we are blessed. Those mm -hmm. people that have made it out of that hell and that darkness that is ice addiction, we are blessed. Yeah. It's like winning a lotto. Amen, amen yeah. to that. Yeah, and we've got the opportunity to give back yeah, absolutely. and and to you know to show people what they're really getting when they think it's no big deal, um, when they think that you know they just try it once, everyone's talking about it. Yeah. Um, you know, we can really um, express what it's like, and you know, at the schools and uh, with with the kids at schools and at forums, people are just saying what a big difference it makes. Um, people that have actually walked the walk and they know. Uh, what it's like and they know um, that we can actually express the hell that you're going to get um, if you even touch it once. So our message to you out there and, and to youth in schools is not even once. And we're here to put the freeze on ice in our nation um, and you know we're, we're doing a pretty good job at it. And you've got to see guys, not just um, the impact that we're having out there through outreach, education, um, but also training community members to do that brief and early intervention, to be able to outreach to somebody that's in addiction and have that conversation, you know. Um, most people don't know what to say. You see somebody entrapped in addiction and, and you, you're like, oh man, you know, they're, they're on drugs and stay clear of them. But we, every single person out there, um, you know, with the right tools and, and conversation, you can make a difference. You just got to open your heart um, and understand that that person, like me and Jay, mm -hmm. we're in there. We're in, suffering. Yeah, hurting yeah. And, and suffering and, and trapped. And, yeah. But you can actually have that right conversation, you know, that we can train you on and you can help somebody to step out of that place um, from love. Yeah? It's, yeah, absolutely. Exactly what you're saying. Every addict is a human being hurting. Yeah. There's, there's a soul in there hurting and struggling, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I keep coming back, I have to say this, the point of difference with the educational program for me is that it's done by people that have been through it. So mm -hmm. I know you said that, Andre, but that really is the point of difference. Yeah. I experienced drug education when I was going through high school and it was like, what? It was a 60-year-old, I had no respect, yeah. built no rapport with me, uh, and I really feel that this education program we've got, the, people have gone through it, that, um, you know, and they can really connect with the kids and share, uh, they share openly about truth, it, you know, they don't yeah. have to hide anything, the truth about yeah. it, yeah, that's exactly From a right. place of love, because yeah. we don't want to see them go down that hell, you know. We, not we're you're bad, don't do this. Yeah, no. It's not, we understand, yeah. you know. And, and it's, um... You know, we go in there and, and say, you know, we're not your teacher, your parent. We're not even going to tell you what to do. Most drug education are going, don't do this, don't do that. We all know drugs aren't good for you. <laughs> and people have asked me that many times, Jay. They go, um, you know, at 40 years of age, like, you know, everyone knows it's not good to take drugs. Yeah, everyone knows. But, you know, we've got 27 youth a day. This is 2015 stats, right? 27 youth every day between eight, up to 25 years of age in high school age bracket, 27 every day are becoming ice addicts in our nation. That's huge. Tomorrow, another 27, Jay. And 2% get off it, do the maths. Yeah, it's, it's huge. And, you know, and, it, and not counting, that's not even counting the adults. So we do have an urgency about it to reveal things like, you know, they're cutting ecstasy tablets um, with ice. They are lacing marijuana with ice and, um, and then you're becoming addicted um, and more often and you are coming to the, to the dealer and then they just transfer you over to ice. Um, you know, they're, they're giving girls in schools little teddy bear, um, little pink teddy bears, um, little tablets saying, you know, you're going to have a great weekend, this is going to make you lose some weight and you're going to have the best high ever. But these kids don't know. What they don't know, they're going to fall into an entrapment of and how that you know can be life threatening. You know, ninety eight percent keep relapsing. You know, I don't know how many funerals I've been to um, this year, but you know, it breaks your heart. It doesn't have to be like this, and it starts with us, Australia. It starts with you know with the community going. I understand what's going on in the brain of an addict and how they got in there, and let's help them out and bring you know get. Ask for the education to be in your schools. Ask for you know your kids to be informed um, with real life 
education, you know. So it is evidence based, practice um, based. Um, the, the, the education has been done before in America, um, in, over 10 years in eight states, dramatically reduced ice use by 63% in teens. Now, I'm no rocket scientist, right, but I go, man, if you can get that, why can't we just do it here? So uh, we've re remodeled the program. We can. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's put the freeze on ice. So we've re remodeled the program, put some Australian stories in there. Um, you know, the cause is the same. And let, let's really go in there with lived experience and educate our kids. So, so we've stopped, you know, explaining a little bit about what we do. What I'd like to do is um, welcome Jay on the show. Um, obviously, I'm the founder of AARC. Um, and... Jay is going to be hosting uh, Let's Talk About Ice. So today's our first segment. Um, and before he takes over, I'd just like him to share a, um, a little bit about his story and um, how, how he integrated now with AARC and doing the awesome work that he's doing, which is such a blessing to have him on board. So Jay, do you want to... Nice to be here. Yeah. yeah go of course, I'd love to share. Story. I'd love to share. Guys, so um, I was... I was struggling with uh, low self-worth and self-esteem issues from a very young age and um, like most Australians, sadly, young Australian uh, males, males, I started drinking young at 13, uh, that's, that's young, uh, binge drinking and, very, and smoking pot and that, I didn't really like pot, I uh, didn't really like the downers. I quickly moved into ecstasy and um, I liked that. But ice was different. Uh, when I stumbled across ice, um, it was a to it was totally different. See, if ecstasy was something I'd do on the weekends, and I was doing it to I was I was uh, selling it to make money to make ends meet because I was out of home, um, and I had a young child and a partner. My partner was suffering mental health, and I was making twelve bucks an hour trying to survive. So I literally. Um, I started dealing ecstasy to make ends meet and to get by. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was offered ice by a workmate, but, you know, it was it was uh, no brain. I was definitely going to have it because I was miserable. I was miserable, so mm -hmm. miserable. I was looking for something. I didn't know what I was looking for, and I wanted to feel good. We all want to feel good, you know. Meth's not the way to do that, you know. Um, Self-love works, so give that one a go. Uh, you know, so I was addicted straight away. As soon as I had it, um, I literally said to myself, "I want to feel like this all the time." And I made um, inquiries into, you know, how I could get bigger amounts of it and have it every day. Um, it was fifty bucks a point at the time. I was only making three fifty a week, so basically, I transferred my ecstasy dealings into that and. Um, and started a habit. At my worst, I was using 500 bucks a day, a gram a day. Um, now, this my story. Um, I used for two years, guys, and I managed to get out of that relatively unscathed. When I say relatively unscathed, I still experienced psychosis. I had a young daughter. I wasn't there for her physically, emotionally, anything. Um, but I did clean my act up, um, you know, through grit and determination, and. I'll get to it, that's not the way to do it. You need more than just grit and determination. But I did, I just, grit and determination, I'm not doing that anymore. Managed to get a house, got a couple of businesses, started building a uh, property portfolio, I was working, uh, got my family back, things were fine. I went through a divorce, and that was fine, but about six to 12 months later, um, I hit some challenging, uh, challenging points when my partner was uh, seeing someone else and there was a few little things with visitation of my daughter. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know I was drinking again um, and you know because I spent a few years completely clean not drinking I wasn't mm -hmm. doing any drugs I was focused on you know health fitness trying to be you know building a proper portfolio I had everything I was starting to really um, get ahead uh, you know but I started drinking and very quickly um, yeah I was back on the pipe again and would you say, sorry to interrupt, um, would you say that like drinking opens the doorway to, you know, allow you to step into maybe, you know, you, you not yeah. quite with it and, you know, why not? And your inhibitions are down. Mm. So we talk about, um, totally. you know, doorways. 
to heavier drugs, you know, drug, alcohol, and then yeah. you might smoke some pot, and then you might, you know, go yeah. into something else. Hey? Yeah, that's and that's yeah. scary because for me, very, it's very true. Yeah. I, I, I don't drink now, yeah. um, and during my recovery, it, I had, I realized very quickly I had to stop drinking because. Yeah. I might be doing really well in my recovery, have a few drinks, next minute I'm using, I'm on a binge. So I had to um, quit drinking. That is so scary though, because drinking is so embraced as part of our culture here, and you know, it's overlooked yeah. so much in our Absolutely. society, which makes me cringe. You know, a lot of adults overlook young kids drinking. Mm -hmm. The scary thing is, like you said, your inhibitions are down. Yeah. Ice is everywhere. Yeah. You're, they're very likely to have ice at a party when there's young teenagers around having a few drinks, yeah. you know, and next minute they've had an ice pipe. That is scary. This drug is ruthless, man. It kills you from the inside out. It's full of toxins that literally tear your organs apart. It kills literally adults. What do you think this drug's going to be doing to a young, developing teen, man? That hits my heart. You know, and that, that fuels my fire, man, to educate this community about this drug. Because we're losing um, too much good uh, human potential, man. Yeah. All these beautiful young kids are susceptible to this drug. Yeah. You know, we need role models in the community to stand Amen. up, you know. And um, because what are these kids looking up to? Yeah. You know, yeah. and I would put it out there to anyone in recovery to turn back and, and look at those people who are going through what you've come through and give back to them. Yeah. I feel personally it's a disservice for me not to share my knowledge and the, what I've learned and gained from going through hell and now being three years clean. You know, I've got a, a wealth to share and I want to reach out to people who are going through that because everybody's worthy of love yeah. and everybody's worthy of a blessed life, man. You know, and you don't need to suffer. Yeah. I haven't met one addict that's not lonely. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's lonely people out there using. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad. You know, and you don't have to be alone, guys. There's a support network here. Andrea and her team that she's put together have been such a blessing for me. Um, like I've shared on a, another video, you know. Having Andrea and the support team there for me and my recovery for the last two years, it's a blessing. These guys love you unconditionally. They're a phone call away. And when they say they're there for you, they are guys. So seriously, I would encourage you to come forward. If you're, think if you're struggling with addiction and thinking about um, maybe moving into recovery, make the call, guys. You know, AARC has got everyone you need to, you know, go where you need to. I've, you Absolutely. Know, haven't well, even told my story. Yeah, you have. He says uh, that one well, but we do. We have family support, clinical family support. You know, they are AOD, you know, counsellors and psychologists. Um, we have people like Jay and myself that um, have been through it. We're, we want to go out there and do brief interventions and talk to you guys when you're ready yeah. to make a change. So if you're in addiction and you're thinking about um, you know, stepping into recovery or walking away from that life because it, mm. you know as well as we do, it's a hell. And Circle. yeah, it just goes from bad to worse, oh. doesn't it, Jay? I mean, I don't Dramas. know. But I lost everything. I lost not just financially. Yeah, I lost three houses and my car, everything I owned. Um, but I lost who I was. You know, I, I was doing, I was lying and stealing and doing things that I wouldn't have imagined. You know, um, when I started, was in recovery already like a year, I walked. I walked into my ex-husband actually and, and he said, you out of all people, I said, don't you judge me. You know, people make a mistake, but there is a way out. Um, and we want to help, you know, we want to help. So that's what AOIC is about. But back to your story, Jay. Um, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, the kind of lifestyle that, um, you know, and I say, how did that impact on you um, as an addict when you're in it? Um, yeah. What was that life like? Like, what were your thoughts and um, what were you feeling at that time, you know? Yeah, the, well, the first word that comes to mind is darkness yeah. and alone, cold, uh, you know, mm -hmm. violent. Mm -hmm. When I relapsed, guys, the whole game had changed. It had been years since I'd used. There was so much more people uh, using the drug. The drug was stronger. The cops were all over it. it was, it's just a seedy world of deceit. And uh, I lost myself, man. Like you said, you lost all your possessions. But really, for me, my experience is the drug makes you the polarity of who you really are. Yeah. It, brings, it brings the darkest side of you out to the surface. And that, that's truly what it does. It might not happen straight away, yet 
you will end up doing things that you will never dream of doing. Your morals out the window, ethics out the window, your entire focus is, your whole world, mm -hmm. every day is about getting on, yeah. using, wondering how you're gonna get back on. Mm -hmm. You need money or goods to get back, to get the drug. So what do you, you know, you end up the stealing, crime rate. Yeah, yeah in, the crime in prostitution. Rate. You end up doing things that so you're stealing sad. from your family and people you love. Like, yeah, absolutely. Know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm not a violent guy. I turned very violent, and, uh, and, yeah, had to turn. I turned to crime to to support my habit. And you mentioned uh, prostitution. That's a very sad thing, man. There's a, a most girls end up in the sex sex industry yeah. um, when they use ice. It goes hand in hand, and. The guys out there dealing it, you know, I'm going to cause a few dramas with this, but anyway, they're conscious of it, you know, they're consciously doing this, mm -hmm. like you said, teddy bears at school yeah. and that, they're consciously putting it out there and doing this, guys, you know, we need to stand up and um, educate our kids, it's a disservice to send our kids into this world with this drug, this drug is so prevalent now, this is the drug, mm -hmm. and it's a drug like we haven't seen before, guys, man-made, synthetic, ruthless drug. And it's available to our kids, so we need to educate them. Yeah. And yeah. But the task force report, um, 2015 task force report, clearly states that this is like no other drug. Um, you know, it's set apart. You know, just to give you an idea, um, you know, you can go into rehab um, and recover rel relatively quickly from heroin addiction, coke. Um, you know, a few months. Yeah, it's tough, and I hear that um, it's really tough going, especially with heroin. Yeah. Um, but you know. What happens in the brain and the body of an ice addict, um, somebody on in ice addiction and using this substance that has got acetone in it, you know, that, that, that's got Drano in it, um, countertop cleaner, um, there's nothing good in there, like toluene and, and stuff that dissolves human flesh. Like, you know, so you're putting that in there. Um, what happens inside the brain, it hijacks the frontal lobe of the brain. The neurological pathways in your brain are broken down. Your, your hippocampus that gets your memory, um, work, that works around surrounding your memory, stops working. You, you know, your, your, um, your dopamine supply is absolutely destroyed and depleted. Um, dopamine makes you feel um, happy and good. Um, you know, your serotonin levels are affected and you, you're acting with aggression and violence. And, you know, all of that takes, for your brain to start to, to get back into normality, it takes around 12 to 18 months. You know, even going through recovery, I remember, you know, I've stopped using this stuff, but I'm still having psychosis and I'm still wanting to die and I'm still, mm -hmm. you know, in this depression. And the depression. Oh, oh the low. Sorry, yeah, it was going. just horrific. I don't know about you, Jay, but every part of my body hurt. You know, I, I remember I, I'd go try and exercise because people used to say, you know, if you exercise, you get dopamine, um, it'll make you feel better. So I'd try and exercise, but man, mm. like for months on end, everything hurt, you mm. know, the body yeah, really I was in takes pain away as well. you, yeah? I'm an athletic person. I couldn't walk 50 metres, you yeah. know, because I was just saying, like, yeah. start exercising again, man. Yeah. I know that's a natural high. Yeah. I got out the door and it was like, I was walking 50 metres and stopping. Yeah. You know what I mean? It yeah. takes time, yeah. like you said. Yeah. So that's, you know, there's so many impacts from, from this drug, you know. So how, you know, did you, you got involved in, you know, um, did you get, go into jail or did you, because yeah, that's, that's like the final outcome, like, you know, you, the outcome of this drug is really, you end up with mental health problems, Yeah. Um, you end up in prison or dead. That's it. You've got three options, guys, or you change. You yeah, know? So, absolutely. Or you don't do it in the first place. Yeah, not everyone wants is our message out there. It's not worth it. You know, all I could think about in recovery, Jay, was if I had known the minute I picked up this pipe and somebody offered me it, and it didn't look bad. It didn't look like something you shoot it up. Um, you know, it wasn't like it looked like a heavy drug, you know. It was just a little bit of smoke. Um, mm. if, but if I had oh, known oh no. the minute I picked it up, that today is still five years clean yeah. and I still have issues with my kidney and my memory and um, you know every day gets better um, but you know at the beginning I was in hospital in a hospital for you know a couple of years and you know now you know putting vitamins back in and you know time heals um, the body but if I had just known and then I thought about kids like my kids and and thought thank god they didn't get entrapped in that but what about all the other kids? They don't know. What about all the people out there that don't know? You know, 
But yeah. if you had known, like... Yeah, people... Yeah, yes. we're back. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah. we'll answer that call uh, a little bit later. But so would it have been different? Absolutely, you? it would have been different. Um, it would have been different if. Yep. It's all good. Yeah, yeah sweet. Yeah. Um, it would have been different for me if I had been educated. Absolutely. So I, I'm really behind the educational program mm -hmm. with you guys, mm -hmm. um, with AAIC. So more, more, can I just share how it all ended please, for me? Yeah, please, because you yes. know this is how I've got here, and Absolutely. this is a really driving force for me. So, Thank you. Um, my relapse, guys. So I relapsed after four years or five years of doing the right. I relapsed, and like I was saying, it was uh, the the whole game had changed, and I lost all of that, all the house, all the stuff, everything, and I actually ended up um, at my worst point, you know, on the street in Southport with nothing, and you know to very quickly, uh, very quickly that happened. No one's immune to this drug. It doesn't mm. discriminate. It doesn't matter your bank balance, your race, your religion, how strong you think you are. Like I know, I know, I know a lot of fellas out there who've been functional drug users for 20 years. They get on ice. They lose everything within a few months. This drug is different. It doesn't discriminate. Yeah. Um, for me, it all ended, guys, when I was arrested uh, two days before my daughter's 12th birthday and um, I was arrested for a violent crime uh, and I was standing on the side of the road, half pissed, a couple of days old, which translates to being up for a couple of days. Um, I'd just been in someone's home the day before and committed a violent offence and it dawned on me in that moment, two days before my daughter's birthday, knowing that I was going to the watch house and straight up to Arthur Gory and I might not get out for a very long time, mm -hmm. that my daughter wasn't going to hear from me on her birthday or know where I was. Now, even during all my time as an addict, I made sure that I would, I would still talk to my daughter on her birthday or, you know, send something or whatever. There would be communication. Mm -hmm. And it just dawned on me, man. It brought me back to my heart that my daughter... Well, how would that? How would she feel? And everything uh, caved caved in for me, and I just had this self awareness of how low I'd become. And the crime that I'd committed the day before was I was just in shock. I was like, "Who have I become? What's in me?" Yeah. It was more the feeling was like, "Oh, what is in me? What has yeah. happened?" You it's know, it's like a possession, isn't Absolutely. it? Jay, when oh, you're, like, it that, is. when you're in, in isolation that deep, it's like it's like you're possessed. You become somebody that you don't. Like I couldn't imagine you. You, Jay's just the most kindest, loving, sweetest person, and I could not imagine. Like I hear his story, um, and I could not imagine him being that person. You know, and that's what mm. it does. Yeah, because like we said before, it makes you the polarity of who you are. I, I, it brings the darkest version mm. of yourself out. Mm. And towards the end of my time in that relapse and my addiction, I was doing things I never would have dreamed of. And jail was a blessing for me because, and that moment for me was it. And I said to myself, an inner commitment within myself, I said, if I get the chance, because there's a chance that I might stay in for my sentence, but I said, if I get a chance to get bail, I'm going to work tirelessly to better myself. Even if I've got to do the time, it won't change anything because I had a real moment within myself. Mm. And I was blessed to get bail after six months in Arthur Gory and, you know, subsequently I've met Andrea and the team and it's been a blessing. I can't speak highly enough of these guys and um, it's just a gift to know them. They, are, they have a gift here for you guys, you know, people struggling. And it's a real blessing. So it's, it's a gift to us too, Jay, yeah, to be absolutely. able to give back. You know, guys, um, when somebody comes out of rehab or, or in recovery, and they get an opportunity to um, to come on board, and we can love on them and train them with dual diagnosis training. We do induction, blue card, all our presenters. Um, they become part of a team, um, a, a team of action. You know that is standing up and pushing out the forces of darkness. That is, mm. uh, you know, killing, stealing, and destroying lives. Mm. And and just to watch these guys come out of a, a classroom after, mm. you know, going in there, Jay, and and, and t warning these kids and. Um, 
they're really hitting home uh, with their stories and these kids going, we don't want that. We don't ever want to go. Thanks for sharing and really meaning that. Like these guys come out of these classrooms and they are absolutely glowing, you know, and, and grateful to be alive and to have another chance at life, you know, and it's just amazing. It's such a blessing um, for me to see that and, and, and in unity, we can make a difference. In unity, we can conquer this, but we need to stand up, Australia. You know, we need to unite like this. Um, you know, we've got offices in Melbourne, in Toowoomba. You know, we're doing works in central Queensland. Soon, we're going to be doing work in WA. Um, and it's just an absolute privilege to um, to do this together. So, you know, if you're out there and you, you think, you know, oh, yeah, it's everywhere and I can't do nothing about it, it's beyond me, um, that, 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 that's false. Mm. You can do something. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, there's many ways you can do something. Um, you can volunteer with us. If you don't have time, you can donate to us because we're not government funded. We're just doing this um, every day, step by step, what we can do um, out of our own resources and, and we rely on, on um, you know, donations and people helping. Um, you can offer, you know, IT services or... Um, things that we can raffle off or um, you know you can be part of our family support team run a family support in your area we can train you we will we want to do that um, you can help set up a forum you can help sharing this post um, the show because next week we're going to have some awesome people talking as yeah, well um, and we want to continue this conversation um, there's so many ways that you can help you know we're looking for some corporate sponsors um, to back this show um, so that we can, unfortunately, we need money to, you know, to buy things to be able to, you know, hand out flyers and family support cards and, you know, and go to different areas in, in Australia to be able to help. Um, we need, you know, offices and internet and everything that a normal business does. But so, you know, we need support. Um, and, and if you want to help somebody out there and, and be a buddy and a sponsor, um, please come forward, put your hand up. You know, it's, it's, two days worth of training, you know, and we can give you the tools that you can be effective in your community. You, you'll be able to recognize um, the signs that somebody may be in addiction and trapped there and that you can help. Um, and, you know, we want to see more of us. We want to duplicate. We want to grow and in unity. So our message, I guess my, mes my message out there is, you know, rise up Australia. Get up and join us in the fight against ice. You know, let's make this happen. Put the freeze on ice. That's it. Well, that's awesome, Jay. What do you have to say about we're just about to go? So, do you want to sure. wrap up and sure. maybe talk about what's coming? In? Yeah, abs absolutely. I'm excited, guys, because you know this is this is an ongoing thing that we're going to be doing. I've got um, I've already booked in the next oh, six weeks with people, and we've got some amazing people that it's a miracle that they are still alive. And they've got the courage to come and share their story, you know, um, unsugarcoated. Mm -hmm. We're going to give, they're going to give the truth of this, of their stories, all in the name of awareness and education. It's just a blessing to be able to share. And I know that having these people on this couch with me and, and talking through their stories is going to help certain people out there. Because everyone's got a unique journey and, you know, someone out there will relate with, this person and then another person will relate with the next person. We're going to get everyone on. I also have um, two professionals over the next four weeks who one of, one of them is like a guru around here when it comes to recovery and stuff. Looking forward to speaking to him. It's ongoing, guys. Um, and do you want to answer some questions? Um, or sure. Is there any... Uh, we have there, some questions no, that have come up. No questions tonight, guys? Um, only encouragement. Awesome, encouragement is great. We're happy with that. We're not going anywhere, guys. This is, um, you know, something that I'm personally very committed to. Uh, I'm working around the clock uh, to get the best people possible um, on the show uh, to share their stories. And thank you for tuning in. Yeah. Share it, guys. Like because evil will triumph if men and women of goodwill do nothing. Amen. So let's do something. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. Um, just want before we go, I'd just like to share the family support number out, out there for everybody. That's zero four eight one eight double four triple five. Um on our webpage www.australianantiicecampaign.org.au. We do have a get help section. Um we also uh, 
always on email. Um, so please, if you have any questions uh, or you, you want to ask anything um, or get some help, uh, we're, we're happy to do that. Um, just shoot us a line on, on, on off our web page or on Facebook. Um, we're always there and yeah, ready to help. My story is up there too. If you want the full um, the full story, which you've probably all heard a lot. Amazing story. If you haven't heard her, this lady is very lucky to be here, has been through hell, so check her story out. Absolute blessing, and to create AARC out of that, it's a miracle, it really is a miracle. So yeah. check it out, seriously, amazing woman, amazing story. Yeah, coming close to Deb said, and it is by the grace of God that I'm alive today, um, and I do give all glory and honour to God, or the creator of the universe, um, for, for this opportunity to make a difference while we're still in, on this earth and alive. So. Um, Look forward to hearing more from Jay next week, and um, and I'm sure you're going to be able to share a little bit more um, as as the show goes on, yeah. um, different areas of, of your journey, um, along with the people that come on the show. So yeah. I'm going to uh, leave you to it, um, and I know you do an awesome job because I know your heart. And um, please support him, guys. Um, support this show because we need people to um, to understand this yeah. addiction um, and to understand how they can get help. So even if it is by sharing, um, let's talk about ice uh, with other people out there. Uh, that's how we're going to spread the message. And we'll be talking about different effects on what happens in the brain. Might even show some diagrams at some stage to um, explain the dopamine and so forth. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be but it's been an absolute pleasure to be with you um, tonight and um, thanks very much, Jay. Yeah, thank you. Can I just share one more thing? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about ice at gmail.com. Yeah. If you've got any questions for me, just shoot, shoot them through and I'll uh, get back to you as soon as I can. So grateful. Well, that was awesome. Awesome. <laughs> we'll see <laughs> thanks, you next week, guys. See you next week. All thanks, right. Jay. Thank you. <laughs>